Hey there, this is Manuel with Antagma and today I will talk about a game related topic called flow maps. Flow maps are vector maps that are used to create a shader that mimics the flow of water or other liquids but can be used to basically make everything flow. By using a flow map you can attack the pixels of a texture and move them through the UV space giving the impression of something flowing. To create these flow maps you can go different routes. One is to buy a Blender add-on to paint them, or you can even use free painting software like Krita to create them. But inside of Houdini, of course, we have a toolkit to create flow maps. So let's dive into Houdini and create ourselves a flow map. You will need the Side Effects Labs tools or game tool. If this Side Effects Labs shelf is empty, press this Update Toolset button and this will open up this pop-up. And if you then click Update, it will install the tools. Then you have to restart Houdini, I think. So to use them, let's put down a geonode. And inside of the geonode, let's create a grid, just a standard grid. And let's up the resolution to 100 by 100. To create flow maps, just type flow and you will be presented with the flow tools. Labs flow map initializes the flow map. As soon as you connect it, it will just create a V attribute that we will use to define the vectors that eventually end up in the flow map. You can visualize these by just ticking this box and it will draw the vectors here in the viewport. To actually paint these vectors, you don't need anything special. We just use the good old comb slop. And to be able to paint the V vector, we want to override this normal and replace it with V. Now, if you press return over the viewport, you enter the tool. And if you make the brush a little bigger, you can start painting flow or vector directions. So let's start with giving this plane some vector directions everywhere. No green vectors anymore. Now, this is vectors, but eventually we will need colors. The game tools have us covered, so let's create a flow map. Labs flow map to color and append it here. This will create a vertex color from these vectors. At this stage, you can disable the visualization of the vectors and you see this is a color that we derived from the vectors. You can, by the way, still make the comb active and paint here. Now that you have that, we want to export this flow map. But before we do so, maybe it's a good idea to blur it a little. So let's add a standard attrib blur before the flow map to color. And let's blur the V vector attribute. Let's give it some iterations, not too many to make this a little smoother. And now we want to export it as a color map. And for that, we can use Mantra, of course, but the game tools have a Labs Maps Baker. This one uses COPS internally to bake out the vertex colors. That's a little bit faster. So let's use the Maps Baker. We want to export vertex colors, so keep this ticked. AO is not important. And it will put the map where your hip is. I did not save my hip yet, so let me do that now. Save as. I will call this flow map 02, as I already have one here. And we want to append something to this name here, tutorial flow map, like so. And I will save it as a PNG. The resolution is 1024, and that is sufficient because it's only vectors. Press render. And here is our flow map that we just created. Let's use this flow map in a different program. Let's go to Blender and create a flow map shader that uses our Houdini flow map there. So here we are inside of Blender. Let's bring in our flow map and make something flow. First, let's delete the camera, the four cube and the light. We won't need them. And let's create a grid or a plane will do. We'll need a shader editor. So let's create one. And this plane will need a shader. Let's call the shader flow map. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is to bring in our flow map. So let's find an image texture node and let's open our flow map. Here's the map that we just created. Let's load it in, let's look at it. And here we have our flow map. These colors are meant to represent vectors, but at the moment they are encoded in the range between zero and one. So we have to change that. Let's create a converter vector math and let's multiply the entire colors by two, then duplicate this vector math and subtract one from it. That turns the value range between minus one and one. Let's move this stuff over. We are not interested in the Z component, the blue component, because this is two dimensional vectors. We only need R and G. So let's create a converter separate XYZ followed by a converter combine X, Y, Z, and let's connect only X and Y, and then connect it up like so. 
So now we only have x and y components. The z component is set to zero. Now we need another vector math, put it here, to scale these vectors. Switch this to multiply, to scale them uniformly, let's create a value node. Connect the value node here. Now we can scale these vectors. Now we have everything in place to add vector texture. So let's duplicate this one and quickly switch over to the image editor to create a new texture, call it test, and let's create ourselves a color grid. Here we have it. And by switching this node over to this test, we have it here. And now we want to add these vectors from the flow map to the UV coordinates to distort this image. So let's get ourselves a texture coordinates node and that brings in the UV. Now we need another vector math to add the UV and the vectors that we just created. Switch this to add. And now we can use these vectors as a distorted UV space for our second texture. You see that gives quite some distortion. Let's lower this value here and by doing so you can exactly tell how much distortion you want. So that is the basic setup for our flow map. It's just that if we animate this value, the distortion gets more and more severe until everything is heavily distorted. That does not look natural at all. So we want to only add back to the colors a little bit and then blend to a second version of this shader that add back the color again a little bit, but offset in time. And by blending back and forth between these two shaders, we will give the impression of constant flow. Before we start animating the advection, let's first create some space here. Let's hide the end panel and let's make the viewport a little smaller, like so. Now to animate something procedurally, we will need the frame inside of our shader editor. To bring it in, let's create another value node. And now let's use a driver to drive this value. Click here and type hash and then frame. This turns purple, that means it's set by a driver. If I move the playhead, you see this value updates. Now I can use this to multiply the length of our vectors and thus animate the advection. But of course this value is far too high, so let's multiply it to make the value a lot smaller. For this we create a math node, connect it here, multiply, use a value of 0.03 or something to multiply this down quite a bit. And now let's use this value to scale our vectors. For that, we will need another multiply vector math node and we want to connect it before the add. So this is our static first scale and that is our animated scale. Connect this here and then our value here. So this is multiplied and then all of this business here. And now let's see what happens. And we have flow going. But as you can see, although we multiplied the frame down quite a bit, it still distorts heavily. We do not want these extreme distortion values. What if we limit this value here to a value of one? And we can do so by using a modulo. So duplicate this node and switch it over to modulo with a second value of one. And that means whenever this value exceeds one, it will be reset to zero because the modulo operator gives the remainder of the division by one. And that looks like this. So after frame 30, it resets to zero and then starts over and so on and so forth. So now we have it looping. But of course it just jumps and we have to fix that. To do that, we will create a second version of this animation offset in time and then blend between the two. How can we create an offset animation? Well, we just have to add to this value here. Duplicate this math node and switch it to add. And now let's add 0.5 because modulo always resets at one. So we add half of this and then a second modulo. Now, this is a second version of the animation offset by exactly 15 frames. And if we connect it here, you can see that we start at frame one distorted and then after 15 frames it resets. So that is a second animation. And now we have to come up with some logic to blend between the two. So let's duplicate our texture. And let's duplicate our multiply and add nodes, second version of them. And let's connect the UV here, connect our flow map vectors here. Now this goes here and that goes there and this goes here. So now we have everything two times. And that means we can just introduce a mix node 
mix RGB and mix the two. Like so. Just mix them together and make them visible. And you see now we have a mixture of both. This slider controls which of the animations is shown. So the first or the second input. And now we have to come up with something to drive this slider. So let's think about it. What if we use this value that we use for the animation, but then convert it to something that ramps up and ramps down and ramps up and ramps down? How can we do that? Well, at the moment, the value range is between 0 and 1. But if we would have a value range between minus 1 and 1, we could use an absolute value. So why not just do that? Let's duplicate this math node and switch it to multiply. Same story as before up here with the vectors. Multiply it by 2 and then subtract 1, subtract 1, and we turn this value range into minus 1 to 1. And now we can use a third math node and set this to absolute value. That means everything that is negative will return positive. And now let's look at this. And here we have our fading. So it switches between white and black and black and white. That is exactly what we need. And this value will control our fraction here. So let's see what happens now. And now we have sort of a constant flow because this palindrome thing controls the blending between the two animations. And whenever one animation gets too far, the shader blends to the other animation where it starts over. And here we have our flow. To make something a little bit more watery, let's use noises instead of this demo texture. So let's lay down a noise. And this noise texture we will need it two times, of course. Let's use these vectors for the noise. Let's look at the noise. That's how it looks. And of course, it distorts. Same story, uses a vector. And let's append a color ramp to remap these noises a little bit. Let's see. Something like this, black to white. Duplicate that one for the second noise. What do we have here? And another noise. And now let's move this mix over and mix the noises instead of the demo textures. This looks like that. Now we have noises flowing. At the moment they are not scaled correctly. So create a new value to scale both noises at the same time and connect this value to the scale inputs. Scale these up quite a bit, say to 10 or maybe even 15. Look at this. That might be used in a bump node. So let's create one, bump map. And let's connect the output of these blended noises to the height of the bump map and this to the normal of our principal BSDF shader. And now let's look at the principal BSDF shader. Now we have animated bumps. And if we now give our shader a color, say pink, and let's give it some subsurface because that looks nice. Now it looks like this, but the distortion is still very heavy. Fortunately, we have this value up here where we can control the overall length of the vectors. So dial this down, let's check. And we have flow going. Let's dial down the map a little bit. And last but not least, let's switch over to the world and load in an HDR by creating an environment texture. And I'll take one that I downloaded from HDRI Haven, this one here. So now let's switch over to EV rendering and let's see what we get here. And here you have your flow shader that you can use. And of course, this map that we created in Houdini is not very sophisticated because I just spent two seconds on creating it. But we can now, of course, go in and use whatever map we want by just loading it in here. So let's use the one that I used for the demo. And you can see here you have the flow going. So this is how you create a flow map shader inside of Blender using data from Houdini. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. 
for supporting us and for access to more in-depth courses on topics like volume techniques or PDG or Vellum and more. To everybody who is already supporting us, thank you so much. Without your continuous support, Entangma would not be possible.